Uh, we say good morning officially to Sam Dandy. Welcome to uh, the DSTV Live. <laughs> I know, I think I'm the last person here. Of course, How does that feel? It feels super amazing. I feel good. I thought you were going to say, I feel so good. I feel so great. I never expired it. <laughs> Stop, <laughs> I don't think, I don't think Sam can pull that off. Say that again. Can you pull that off? No, I can't. <laughs> You're too bougie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what's happening around uh, Africa on the entertainment scene? All right, there's so much happening, but let's start with this one. As Afrobeats continues to take center stage all over the music scene globally, we're highlighting every single achievement as they come. This week, Nigerian musicians Thames and Burna Boy have climbed up on Billboard's Top 100 charts, the United States Weekly Charts, ranking songs based on sales, radio play, and of course, online streams. Now recall that songstress Thames had just last week debuted at number 90 on the charts with a solo project. Her 2022 hit, Free Mind, has now climbed from number 90 to now number 77, surpassing hit songs like Bones from, of course, Imagine Dragons, Massive by Drake, Love Me More by Sam Smith, amongst others. Thames still sits, of course, co-sits at number five on that chart with her feature on, of course, Future's Wait For You. And let's not forget her Wakanda Forever prologue of Bob Marley's No Woman No Cry sits at number one on Billboard's world digital sales charts. Now that's super amazing for her. Of course, African giant Burna Boy, on the other hand, has enjoyed three weeks on the Billboard's Top 100 charts for hit song Last Last. Off his latest album, Love Damini, Last Last now sits at number 70 on the charts. The multi-award winning singer has enjoyed much buzz and reception also from his global tour. He has recently broken records becoming the first African to sell out the 20,000 capacity State Farm Arena in Atlanta. In 2022 alone, Burna Boy has sold out the world-renowned 22,000 capacity Madison Square Garden to the 20,300 Acor Arena in France. There's also the 19,000 capacity Toyota Center amongst others. I'm looking forward to certainly seeing more African stars debut in the American chats. And of course, you can trust that I'll be watching closely to see how far up Thames and Burner Boy climb on the charts. But we have something for you. Let's watch this. We're finally in ATL. ATL! How you feeling? You go bow for the result, though. Nothing to discuss, though. Cause I didn't win the right. I'm without any doubt, though. I'm gonna be happy, I don't, though. I don't go feel the truth. What a time to be alive. In fact, what a time to be African. I like how Burner Boy takes his mom everywhere, of course. Well, now let's move to Nollywood. Epic blockbuster film King of Thieves has achieved a new milestone. The Euphoria 360 and Anthill Studios film has debuted on American streaming platform Amazon Prime Video. Now, the film's debut on the streamer comes after 14 weeks in Nigeria's box office and its record-breaking 320 million Naira earning, becoming the first Yoruba language film to hit that milestone. Now, the Adebayo Tijani and Tokwe Adebayo Salami directed film is set in Ajerumi, a fictional Yoruba kingdom that is forced into chaos following the invasion of the vicious Ajay Nipushe. Now, King of Thieves boasts a stellar cast with Femi Adebayo Salami in the lead role with Tony Abraham, Odunade Adekola, Ibrahim Chat, Ade Dimeji Latif, Aisha Lawal, Mr. Macaroni, Borda Shaggy, amongst others. Now, recall that Antil Studios signed a licensing deal with a streaming platform that will see Prime Videos launch the studio's films after their theatrical run. King of Thieves, of course, debuted in theaters April the 8th, months before making its appearance on Amazon Prime. We're certainly looking forward to seeing more Nigerian films with African representation on international streaming platforms like this. If you're yet to see King of Thieves, here's a trailer that might convince you. Let's watch this. A big congratulations, of course, to the cast of The King of Thieves. And I should 
definitely, you know, develop my Yoruba speaking and understanding. But finally, now to East Africa, Uganda's Ministry of Education and Sports has asked schools to regulate the performers they invite for entertainment following a growing trend of semi-nude artists recorded performing to high school students. In a letter sent to school administrators, the ministry cited a 2019 video in which songbird Winfred Nakamwagi, popularly known as Winnie Wagi, was recorded performing indecently to students at St. Mary's College, Kibusi. Now, Dr. Jane Eguauqua, on behalf of the ministry, permanent secretary said this, Extracurricular activities in schools normally mean sports and games, debate clubs and ETC. If schools need to entertain themselves, then they can engage in acting plays or arrange concerts. However, inviting singers who dance erotic dances naked in the schools in the guise of extracurricular activities must be forbidden henceforth. The ministry says it will provide guidelines on the nature and conduct of co-curricular and entertainment activities allowed in schools, as of course in Uganda they are the custodians of values and behavior of the children of Ugandan schools or while in school, even for both government and private schools. Now, I will certainly let you know once we get our hands on the guidelines, and maybe, just maybe, other African nations will or should implement them. Honestly, if you ask me, in a time when it's almost impossible to monitor children's access to phones and the internet, I believe maybe the school should remain that safe, secure space from all distractions from the world. But of course, what do you guys think about this? Well, I, I completely agree. You know, just looking at the pictures, I was shocked, you know, at first. Um, you know, and I was asking Olive, you know, what, what exactly is going on here? So. I completely agree. I, I also said, you know, in my age, I'm not that old, but, you know, when I was in secondary school, right. we, we mm. didn't get concerts. You know, we, mm. we went for excursions. You went to Ogun State and some other places. Went to the museum, went to see um, rocks and, and random things like factories. Mm. Those were the extracurricular activities that we did, you know, that were maybe sponsored by the school. We didn't get concerts. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure how this has happened. I mean, it, it's a little uncom no, very uncomfortable to mm -hmm. see we should not sexualize these students. They're very young. Allow their minds. The minds of children are like a blank slate, and you write with it on, with the experiences that you expose them to. It's very uncomfortable to see. Reminds me of uh, the Nigerian actor who was being dragged, Lady Bakari, because she, she was on set and she wore this costume, and the costume showed an inflated bum, and she was allowing little kids to touch the bum, and they were singing and dancing around her. And just says, look, as much as kids are, let kids be kids. When they get to 18 years, when they become adults, then they can do whatever they want to do. Well, I'm really glad that this move has been put in place. But Thames, good news for Thames, good news for Burner Boy. Mm -hmm. I saw Thames share a very emotional story of the background of her song, Mr. Rebel, and how her mom was in a really bad place. Her mom had just had an accident and mm -hmm. she dedicated the song to her mom, who was seated in the audience while she was performing. Whilst stifling tears, it was just very hard to woman. I'm so excited for her. It's almost like every week there's a STEM story. Honestly. Very interesting. All right, let's, um, thanks a lot, Sam Dandy. Of course. <laughs> <laughs>